The purpose of this video is to show you some inverse trig function examples. We'll review the graphs that you saw in the last video and then show you how we use the inverse trig functions to help us simplify expressions. In class, we'll also look at examples of how to graph trig functions, or at least their inverses, with their transformations. So let's get started. The first function is inverse sine. In words, this is the angle of the arc between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 with a sine value of x. Here you see what it means in symbols. I show you the domain here, the range, then what the graph itself looks like. Moving on to inverse cosine, this is the angle of arc between 0 and pi over 2 with the cosine value of x. You can see that the domain is negative 1, 1. The range is 0 to pi. And you see the graph of this function as well. Next, we have the inverse tangent graph. So we can see inverse tangent in words, the angle or arc between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 with the tangent value of x. You see symbols the domain, the range. Notice the use of parentheses instead of brackets here. That tells us that negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 are not included in the range. And as a result, you see asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 in the graph. So if you need to look over these again, pause the video, go back if you need to. You can print these, type these pages out. It's up to you but we'll put them in the interactive notebook as well. Let's get started with some examples. On the left, the first example asks the question, what is the arc sine of 1 half? In other words, what is the value of x when sine equals 1 half? So if I wrote it this way, I'd say sine of x equals 1 half, and the question is, Where does this happen? What does x have to equal in order for this to be true? So you have to know your unit circle. As we leave at 0 and we make our way to pi over 2, the first location we encounter where sine is 1 half is pi over 6. So x could be pi over 6. Again, that's as I travel from 0 to pi over 2. I can't go past pi over 2. So now I have to travel 0 to negative pi over 2 and ask myself the question, is there an option for sine to be positive 1 half down here in this fourth quadrant? And the answer is no. So the only value I have where sine is 1 half is the angle pi over 6. Now if I ask the question about the arc sine of negative 1 half, following that same logic, as I make my way from 0 to pi over 2, sine is only 1 half at pi over 6. But I'm asking about negative 1 half, so I have to go from 0 to negative pi over 2, and I can pick up negative pi over 6. So here is sine x is negative 1 half, then x has to be pi over 6. Now I want you to be really careful because some students will say that x is 11 pi over 6, but this cannot be the case, and that's because the range of inverse sine has been restricted, so I can only get values that are between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Make sure you stay inside your range. Next, we have what's called the composition of functions, and here we have to be careful with domains and ranges as well. The arc sine of 1 half we just saw was pi over 6. So essentially we're being asked to find the sine of pi over 6. And notice that that value is 1 half. Let's take a look at the opposite. If I'm asked for the sine of pi over 6, the answer is 1 half. If I'm asked for the arc sine of 1 half, the answer is pi over 6. Now, that begs the question of, can I just 
automatically cancel out sine and arc sine, or arc sine and sine, and I'm left with the same answer. The answer there is no. It doesn't always work that way. And you might ask, well, why not? Well, let's take a look at another example. What if I asked you for the arc sine of the sine of 11 pi over 6? Well, the sine of 11 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. But the arc sine of negative 1 half is negative pi over 6 based on the range restrictions that we have. So please do not follow the pattern of just crossing out the functions because they're inverses of each other. At some point, that's going to get you into some trouble. For example, sine of 5 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6 is in the second quadrant. Sine value of the 30 degree angles in the second quadrant is negative 1 half. So I'm essentially being asked for the arc sine of negative one half, and we just saw that that is actually negative pi over six, which is not the same as five pi over six. If I try that for seven pi over six, now I've moved into the third quadrant. The sine of seven pi over six is negative one half, but we've already seen that the arc sine of negative one half is negative pi over six. So again, these do not always cancel out. That is a misconception. Please do not try that. It will not always work. Last set of examples have to do with compositions of functions that are different. So if I want sine of the arc tan of 3 fourths, remember this question asks, what is the angle where tangent equals 3 fourths? And then I want the sine of that angle. Well, the way to take a look at this is to make a right triangle. Tangent is definitely positive in the first quadrant. It's also positive in the third quadrant, but we'll draw it as a first quadrant angle. So if we label this as theta. I know the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite is 3, the adjacent is 4. If you remember the Pythagorean triples that I taught you, then we know that this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so the hypotenuse is 5. Arc tan of 3 fourths, what is the angle where tangent is 3 over 4, where that angle is theta? So arc tan of 3 over 4 is the angle theta. Now I'm being asked for sine of theta. Well, I know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And so in this case, sine of theta is 3, which is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 5. Last example, I want the sine of the arc cosine of x. It might be easy for you to think of this as x over 1. I'll follow that same logic. I want the angle measure where cosine is x. But I'll draw a right triangle to help me. So cosine is theta equals x over 1. If I draw that right triangle, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is x, hypotenuse is 1. In order to find the arc cosine of x, arc cosine is that angle theta. So what I'm really being asked is for the sine of theta. That means I have to do a little work here to find out what this opposite side may be. But here's what I know. By Pythagorean theorem, I know that, I'll call this uh, b, that x squared plus b squared equals 1 squared. If I'm solving for b, b squared is 1 minus x squared. So b is the square root of 1 minus x. So that's the value of my opposite side. So if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, then I'm looking at the square root of 1 minus x over the hypotenuse, which is 1. And of course, we can just simplify that to the square root of 1 minus x. So the goal, again, is just to give you a few examples to help you out in recognizing what happens with inverse trig functions. I certainly hope this has been helpful and that you come to class tomorrow ready to practice. Until then, 
Have a great evening.